Let's record. Now, remember just now I mentioned about the Benjamin Sears Bridge Road and uh, Benjamin Sears Bridge. Now, if the person die die want to go fast on a wet day, what you can do is you go on a road bank. Road bank. So the car is over here. Now, do you agree that weight acts on the body, normal contact force acts on the body? Therefore, if you add up the two forces, it gives you the centripetal force. Can you see that in this diagram, there is no frictional force? You don't need friction to go around a circle. That's the beauty of it. Even if the road is made of butter, you can still make the turn. Okay, just joking. This is impossible. That means even if the road, <laughs> if the road is made of butter, even if the road has no friction, you can go around the circle. Okay, let's cut away the point. Why would the car even start to move in the first place? Okay, let, let's take away that. But the idea over here is that even if the road is very slippery, even if there's no friction, you can go around in a circle just by banking the road. Now, if you were to call this angle theta, it can be proven that this is theta. Therefore, n cos theta must be equal to mg and n sine theta must be equal to mv squared upon r. If you take tangent theta, this divided by this, you will be able to find the exact angle that you need to bank the road so that you can go around the circle with no frictional force at a certain speed, at a certain radius. Yeah. So if you were to take a look at pictures, go and search Benjamin Shears Bridge pictures, images, you'll see that the road is actually bank. Why? Because they don't want cars to fly out from the road. Yeah, the road speed was about 90 km per hour. Now it's downgraded to a highway or high whatever. It's no longer an expressway. So the speed limit has been downgraded to 70 km per hour. So technically, probably they don't need to bank the road anymore. Yeah, but you cannot unbank the road. <laughs> bank, unbank. Barrett, you okay? Okay, I think it's a perspective problem. So what happened is that the car actually goes on the bank and then goes round like this. So it goes. Yeah, it goes in and goes round. Another place where you can find this is. Luch, 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 luch. It's like terrestrial luch, USS. <laughs> Adventure Cove. Oh dear. <laughs> so, what you have over here is uh, tangent theta equals to v squared. But also, you, you roughly know the speed at which the cars are traveling, you know the radius of a road, then you know how to bank the road. Okay? Cool. Now, let's go for the fun one. You've got a circle, a sphere sliding down another bigger sphere. At some point, what will happen to the sphere? It will, it will fall off, correct. The task that I'm going to bring you, the task I'm going to perform, and the journey I'm going to bring you through is to find the angle at which it falls off. The angle at which it falls off. Then this will lay the foundation for the $5 problems I'm going to give you. <laughs> yes, the $5 problem. So this thing over here is the small mass M. Now, at this position, do you agree that there is weight, there is normal contact force? Assuming that it's frictionless. Now, assuming that this is angle theta, then um, if we set up a little bit of trigonometry, this will be 90 minus theta. This will be theta. Agree? So, this over here will be your theta. And if I resolve the weight, in this direction and this direction, if this is theta, this will be 90 minus theta. Yeah. And this will be theta. So tab du over here, the tab du that's in this direction will be tab du cos theta minus n equals to mv squared upon r. Still follow? Because the weight in the direction towards the center minus the normal contact force must be equal to the net force. And at the point where the normal contact force goes to zero, I can say that mg cos theta equals to mv squared per naught. Simple, no? Simple, huh? Except the problem is this. If we want to find theta, we're not given r and v. We only know g. So how? 
<laughs> that's when you invite Mr. Conservation of Energy out. Do you agree that half mv square will be equal to the loss in GPE? I got a feeling that it is a little bit out of sight. So I just turn it a little bit towards here. Half mv square equals to the loss in GPE. Now the loss in GPE, can you see that this is the height loss? Agree? Now this is R. And what is this? This is R. What is this? R cosine, correct. So therefore, this is mgr1 minus cosine theta. And therefore, mv squared upon r is equal to 2mg1 minus cos theta. If you plonk it inside here, you'll be able to solve for cos theta. No v, no r. <gasps> no v, no r. All eliminated. Yes, unbelievable, right? Yeah. You'll find neatly that cos theta, if I'm not wrong, it's two-third. If I don't remember wrongly. Now, the beauty of this is that it doesn't depend on the mass. It doesn't depend on the radius. It doesn't depend on these important parameters. So long as you have a frictionless surface, something that's sliding down, it will be two third. Okay. Give it a shot. See it to the end. And no, I don't remember any USS rights that are like this. <laughs> In case you start thinking in that direction again. Ah, to find out, yes, of course, of course, of course. Bumsy jump, bumsy jump. Oh, yes, that's centripetal force. That's centripetal. You mean they have that now? In the cage, and then it rotates, rotates, and then the base moves away. Have you ever played it? You haven't done Okay, they don't have it. It's really cool. I did one, there was one way I went to in the Disney, I think it was uh, France. You stand in a room and then it's a circular room, then the room starts to rotate. As it rotates to a certain point, the ground moves away. But you're stuck to the wall. Yeah, so it's really cool. It's like when the, wall, when the floor moves away, it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, France! Now France! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's COVIDly impossible. <laughs> it's. it's... No, ah, oh, oh, right, right, right. Of course, of course. How about Greenland, Iceland? <laughs> Anywhere except Singapore. Asking! Oh, oh, right, coefficient of friction, I'm sure. Right, do you get co cosine theta equals to 2 third? Again? So, what is the $5 question? How does it look like? <laughs> okay, let's take a look, yeah? You got two beads over there. Two beads, that means um, it's two small little masses over there each of mass small m small m this is a big loop of mass big m it's a very classic question yeah so what happened is that these two beats over here starts to slide down here comes the question find the value of m upon m so that the loop jumps <laughs> yes Ooh, that what it jumps yes so at some point if your m over m satisfies certain condition the loop will pew <gasps> what do? 
Um, okay, let me construct. Let me construct. I think it can be done. Yep. Even though friction and all these things may come into but I think it's possible. That's a good idea. We should construct it. We should construct it. It's independent of the radius. It's independent of the radius. Find the ratio of small m is to big m so that the loop can jump. Yeah? Minimum or maximum. So five dollars question. Um let's see who can solve it. Yeah? Looking forward, looking forward. You ask a very good question. Why does it jump? For something to jump, the upward force must be lower, bigger than the downward force, right? Yeah, so that's it. Uh. Easy, right? <laughs> it's like, wha what? Upward force bigger than downward force? Uh? Then think about this. What creates the upward force? Think, think carefully. Think, think. And then, then how does it create the upward force? Can? Okay, not. Not life threatening, I hope. Cool. Think about this, huh? So with this, um, probably we have time for one more advanced question. You will need you will need something that you use over here. You need something that you use over there. You need something that you use over here. No, no, no! It's not a thing. No, it jumps before it hits the bottom. Yeah, yeah. It's like what? What kind of sorcery? Yes. <laughs> and there is a solution, uh, there is a legit solution. And when I show you the solution, you'll be like, oh. <laughs> like I told you, la. Are they so? <laughs> Very helpful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. F out equals MG. Yay! <laughs> Sorry? Uh, anyhow whack already uh. <laughs> Anyhow whack already uh. 3 over 4 uh, Root 3 over 2 Anyhow whack already uh. <laughs> Okay, let's see whether you can get it or not uh. it, It's actually yeah, a nice number Integer over integer Ah, start to, start to uh, guess uh, yeah, 5 over 7 <laughs> Guess enough, you'll get it correct There's only 100 combinations alright 1 to 10, 1 to 10 100 com <laughs> 1 about 1, 1 about 2, 1 about 3, 1 about 4, 1 about 5 <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you so desperate for five dollars or not? <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Yeah, you got a car of center of gravity, um, height above the the ground h, and this is r. This is two l. So say you got a car, an F one car. Yes, just try to imagine that it's an F one car. Um, an F1 car, center of gravity, height h, and it has a base of uh, wheel base 2L. The center of mass is at a distance r from the center of the circle. Question number one, what are the forces acting on the car? How many forces? Count. Count how many forces act on the car. How many forces acting on the car over here? Yeah, it's going around a bend like this. It's going in and turning towards the right. Yeah. How many forces act on the car? There's weight, yes, that's correct. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> How? There are five. <laughs> the weight, the normal contact force on the right, the normal contact force on the left. Four wheels. You're looking from the back, hello? So the two wheels get aligned, so you only see two wheels. Okay, fine. Let's say on this diagram. <laughs> so normal contact force on the right, left, and frictional force on the right, on the left. Okay? So therefore you have uh, N1, N2, F2, and F1. And of course, Mg. 
do you agree that linearly n1 plus n2 is equal to mg and f1 plus f2 together it must be mv squared for now linearly horizontally and vertically cool yep now let's take moments yeah i, I hope you still remember moments yeah if you take moments about here how many clockwise moments are there How many clockwise moments are there? There are four forces creating moments. Yeah, N1, N2, F1, F2. How many clockwise moments are there? How many? <laughs> there are only few possible answers. Like actually, four possible answers. Eh? <laughs> One to four. <laughs> About the center of gravity. About the center of gravity. So how many forces create clockwise moment? The answer is one. And that's N2, correct? So N2 multiplied by L must be equals to N1 multiplied by L plus F1 times a H plus F2 times H. You okay? Therefore, N2 minus N1 is equal to uh, H upon L times MV square upon R. Why? Because F1 plus F2 equals to MV square upon R. MV square upon R. And if I bring this equation down, N2 plus N1 equals to MG. Do you agree that this will give me N2 to be half? of mg plus mv squared upon r times h upon l and n1 to be equals to half of mg minus mv squared upon r times h upon l <clears throat> so which wheel will lose contact first the inner wheel yes correct because n1 is a minus so if you go too fast the car will flip out towards the left yeah, this will lose contact first if you go too fast. Now the question is how fast? So if we let n to be equals to zero, if you work out the um, necessary math, mg must be equals to mv squared upon r times h upon l. M cancels off. V will be equals to gr uh, times l upon h <coughs> square root. Now you understand why sports car have to be wide wheelbase and low center of gravity. Because of this factor, L upon H. The bigger the wheelbase, the higher the speed you can travel before you lose contact. The lower the center of gravity, the higher the speed you can travel. Yeah, That's why Lamborghini, Ferraris, they are all like almost close to the ground. Yeah. But unfortunately, wheelbase, they cannot make, make the wheelbase too big. Yeah, there's always... How do you go up multi-story car park? <laughs> how do you go up multi-story car park? You just can't. Yeah? If the wheelbase is too wide. Now, even in fact, if they're so low, if they go multi-story car park, also problem. It's like, bang, bang. Just, just cannot go up. It's like, bang. And I think that in Singapore, the, they intentionally heighten the car a bit so that it can go up multi-story car park. Yeah. Um, I think when you go wide, there's um, there's a lot more space for it to twitch. Like how do you call it? To twist the body will start twisting. If it is yes, yeah. So the thing is that and you'll be heavier. All these things. I think there's optimal size. <laughs> oh, no, you remind me of you remind me of this movie called what was that movie Dictator? <laughs> <laughs> bang bang bang! bang. <laughs> yes, that was really really yeah. Uh, at the start of the movie, it's like bang bang bang, all the competitors die. <laughs> By the way, you're not supposed to have watched it, uh. <laughs> Ah, I don't know why you smile. <laughs> You're not supposed to have watched it live Black Mirror, huh? Black Mirror. Yeah, not supposed to have watched it, huh? Okay, again, so just 
whatever I mentioned in this video, advance. Okay? So if you're lost, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> but do remember that it's important for you to know this so that you can comfortably go around the ASP paper yeah, bend. So know whatever that is inside here. Um, no surprises, so know this. Okay? Rest assured that I will give you the solution for this, but I hope that the solution comes from you rather than from me. Okay? You might have an even better solution, but the solution requires, my solution requires differentiation. Okay, so let's, that's the hint I'll give you. Uh, other than F up equals to MG. 